TG or not TG? That am the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or blouse and skirt. Which am it? The Bayard Dynamic. Bayard Dynamic. MATA, one of my favourites. And of late, I've been using it a fair bit because I haven't had Phantom Power or even Phantom Power or any of them business. And I'm thinking, what a good mic this is. Designed in 1962. In fact, I was wondering, what microphone can I recommend to people? What, what, what? It's very difficult. What can I recommend to people? I'm thinking, really? If they're going to be an artist, because it needs, you need to know what you're doing with it. So if they're an artist, I think I'm going to recommend them a dynamic. I think it's going to be the Bayer ME tape, but the difficulty is that I don't, I wouldn't recommend the current one for vocalists. It's very similar, but f for vocalists, there are a couple of things about it which is not so good. And then I thought, well, actually, it's been produced since 1962. There's got to be loads of them online. In fact, there are coming up. So I thought, I can recommend it, I think, because it's easy enough to get. It's not like I'm recommending some uh, discontinued thing that's completely obscure. You won't be able to get it. But there are loads online that seem to be working fine. So I'm, I think I could recommend it. So I had a, a little look to see how many there were. Lots of new ones, lots of the black TG. But quite a few of the older ones, probably from the 60s up until... I think probably the late 80s is when the TG came in. And the TG, as far as I'm aware, had the thicker grill, neodymium magnets, but it has a thicker grill, it's tall group, so it's meant to be tougher. You understand? Tough. Tough. And uh, some of the other mics are TG. The M700 is a TG version. Possibly only T TG, because that was produced in the late 80s, I think. However, when I was looking to see what's available, I saw one that said TG, and it didn't look like a TG to me. You'll see some pictures coming up, and these are the things I noticed. Well, obviously, it looks like the older version. From what I can tell from the photograph, it hasn't got the thicker grill, it certainly isn't black. Uh, it has TG at the bottom of the barrel and on the rather lovely individual frequency plot it says TG on there. I look at the box and to me I'm not an expert on these things. I've got quite a bit of experience but I'm not an expert. The box to me looks like, look for yourself, it looks like uh, the mics that are on there looks fairly old to me. It's not like the later blue box, which I shall show you. And uh, I see the screws around the capsule, around the basket there, and I see that they're slot head. And uh, the newer M88s, the TGs, have cross head. The thread is the same for the screws, so I've got some spares which are cross head, but they fit the older mics. But they're, they're cross head, not, not slot head. So I'm looking at all this and thinking, it doesn't look like a TG to me at all, but it seems to be officially one. So what to do? Well, I thought if it's a reasonable enough price, I'm going to go for it. And the fellow gentleman was selling another one, which is not a TG. looks almost identical. So guess what? I'm going to unbox the pair of them, and we'll have a little look, and we'll see what we think of it. Incidentally, I'm on the road. I've found a way of uh, mounting it at a jaunty angle without the uh, basket thing, suspension thing, because it doesn't seem like I need it. I've got a rather uh, sturdy mic stand which just goes straight onto the carpet on a concrete floor, not touching anything. So as long as I don't hit it, there shouldn't be, I uh, shouldn't need the suspension. And at this jaunty angle, it uh, doesn't really get in the way. Whereas when it was in the basket like this, it was kind of like bit too much. So I'm uh, re-evaluating the Rode Classic 2 valve mic and uh, so I'm going to use it on videos 
where I'm not actually um, reviewing microphones where I need a flat mic as a reference. So this one with its ebullience doesn't really matter. Just to get to see if I uh, if I like it. I'm not using a pop filter. I'm not using headphones, so there might be pops. We shall see when I listen back. But I'll leave them if there are. So let's get down to the unboxing and have a little look at why I am suspicious. Yeah. Suspicious. So please bear in mind I'm not a biodynamic M88 historian. It's just my experience, so they, I was going to say there could be a reason. There obviously is a reason. Well, I don't know. I haven't opened the box yet, but we shall see. Um, the microphone I'm speaking on now is the Earthworks SV33, and I've had a bite of a Cadbury's cream chocolate egg, so my voice is a bit uh, chocolated up. I've been off the coffee and the wine, etc., for a month. Well, I've got five days to go, and I notice that my chocolate intake has increased just a little. So, as far as I know, this is the kind of 80s biodynamic box. And you can see uh, the, this is from an M500, I believe. Yes, M500. And the rather nice plot. Nice paper with the uh, Engaging, I don't know what they are, perforations. I can imagine the machine that they were done on, ticking away as it draws the plot. Delightful. These are two, as you can see, touring gear, touring gear TG boxes. These are newer. And the trace is individual, it's got a serial number. But it's not as charming somehow. Anyway, that was the box, I assure you. And likewise with this one from the V96C. Yes, indeed. And again, serial numbers on there. Oh, and the date. Nice to have the date. I don't think the old ones had the date. So. That's what the boxes look like. Hmm. Ah. The microphones This is the non-TG, fairly late model. You can see the crosshead screw, you can see the fine mesh. And I think the, uh, the most pleasing era. And this is the TG, you can see much coarser meant to be tougher. I don't see the necessity myself. Don't drop the thing. But anyway, and without the extension there, though the barrel's much the same size. So that's the TG official with a crosshead screw, screws, as you can see. So I don't know what we've got here. Let's see. Was well, rather a charming gentleman. I thought he'd got very good um, back and forth uh, to in, in order to send them in one package and so on and so forth. And he's, he lives in uh, Cambridge, which is a lovely city in England. And he put his address on the back of the package and everything like that. So I'm sure everything's going to be in order. I like to uh, video these anyway, not for, for you guys, but for unboxing anyway, in case there are any issues and it is live. And if there are any issues or there's any damage, then at least I've got a video. They could say I rigged it up afterwards, of course, but at least I've got something. So, oh, let's lock this, shall we? Do things sensibly. Oh, away from yourself, yes.
Well, looking at the boxes, those look quite like quite um, vintage microphones to me. Ah, but I've just noticed Cliff Industrial Estate, Lewis, Sussex, which is in England. And then uh, Burns Avenue, Hicksville, New York State, presumably. That's interesting. I don't know which one is which. Well, we'll find out. Bags are in very good condition. Well, this says it's the TG. So the moment of truth. Let's look at the other one first. <laughs> Why not? Oh, there's more stuff in here. Oh, looks like one of these probably came from this. But both of them say that N C, which is all oh, loads of it. Hmm. And this one does say the N N C. Might compare the graphs later. The wonderful biodynamic clip. So this is the NC, as you can see. With the slot head screw in uh, almost Apparently unused condition. I'm sure it has. Well, you can tell if it's been used or not. But in uh, in superb condition. Didn't he didn't make much of it actually? I'd have made more of it in a condition like this. And the bag is is kind of pristine as well. I wonder what their life's been. Look at it. Very good. So the one of interest then. Well, not that that's not of interest. Is the so-called TG. Here we go. <laughs> well, why is this a TG? What I was going to do, oh, let me look at the serial number if I can read it. Not quite, it's very faint. Uh, is there something before that one? One, four, two. Can't be one, four, two, surely. It's too far too short. There must be something before it. But I can't see there. Anyway. Well, I can see. No difference. I was just wondering whether this one's had a slightly longer. No. Well, it's a mystery to me. What I was going to do is um, I was thinking I'll unscrew these. I might. I don't know if I will. And see if there's some reinforcement underneath here. Maybe there was a phase in between the the much more much more robust um 
but this is pretty robust and it's springy as well. So when you drop it, it, it springs a bit, probably protects things. But anyway, I, like, I just like this. I mean, really. But I was wondering if there was a phase where they, where they reinforced underneath before they went to the full TG, because I can see nothing about this that uh, makes it a TG at all. Next thing I'm going to do then is just plug them in and try them quickly to make sure they're working. Well, obviously, before I um, do any more fiddling about. So if they're not, I can send them back. Um, but uh, I'm sure they will be, but we shall see. I'll just do that anyway. And I don't think I'm going to bother undoing that because there's always a damage if you've got to have... I've got dualist screwdrivers, but there's always a risk of things I've, I've realised, you know, leave well alone, really, unless there was some reason for me to think there's going to be something different. I just don't think so. I don't know why it's called a TG. No idea whatsoever. But it's a really very handsome mic anyway. So, sorry if that's a bit of a disappointment. Before we go... I may as well compare. I do like these clips with the, the and these are the older clips as well. The, the newer one, this one feels like it hasn't been used at all. Um, the newer ones have a black ground there. I can't like the having the chrome ones. Let's, let me have a look at the two uh, plots. So, so TG is the lower one. Well, there is a difference. I mean, really, if I can... Uh, that's not going to work, sorry. Up to 20 kilohertz. Well, it drops off a little bit, you know, what I say? Yeah, okay, up to 20 kilohertz. But really, slight hump there, slight hump there. Little different there. Little scoop there, little scoop there. Larger hump there than there is here. A little bit of a toing and froing going down there to a slight plateau. Slightly longer plateau there. And down to 50 hertz there. This is before the proximity trace, which is considerable on these mics. So the proximity trace would fill that in and beyond. So really very, very consistent, considering what looks like the accuracy of this trace. I mean, they're not messing about, not smoothing stuff, stuff out. It looks like it's very honest. So that's quite something. Oh, you can see the serial numbers here. And that one is just 142. And that one is... Three eight, so that's the number I'm used to seeing, the longer number, which leads me to suspect that the TG is a newer run. There's no date. And that maybe this is only number 142 of the newer run. But I don't know. Well, this has been rather longer than I imagined. But uh, just to finish off, they're plugged in. I've got no complaints. They both work fine. They're uh, in excellent condition, more so than the gentleman didn't really describe them. Just said good condition. One of them didn't even say. Uh, you could see from the photographs, but anyway, I'd have made more of it myself, but there we go. Slight difference in the sound, I noticed, as I acoustic sound. And the TG, so-called, So uh, slightly different. Road Classic and on to the uh, NC. I'm going to read from their spec sheet. Un momento, por favor. Okay, on the, uh, the NC. A hypercardioid moving coil microphone. The M88 is a dynamic moving coil microphone with a hypercardioid polar pattern, which is more tightly directional than that of any other mic in its class. Its frequency-independent pickup pattern reduces feedback and off-axis coloration to an absolute minimum. The M88's efficient moving coil design delivers high output over a wide range of working distances.
and this is the TG. Where was I? Wide range of working distances, I seem to remember, but I can't find it. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. Its wide frequency response and fast transient response enhance the presence and articulation of voices or instruments while accurately reproducing bass frequencies. The M88's natural, well-balanced sound can only be described as elegant, yet its rugged design virtually eliminates non-linear distortion at extreme SPLs. The integral, integral humbucking coil reduces interference from stray magnetic fields. Well, what are we looking at? Hypercardioid, 1962 design, remember? Hypercardioid already. We're looking at 30 hertz to 20 kilohertz. We're looking at fast transient response. We're looking at high SPLs. That means you can shout into the thing without distorting. distorting. And there was something else which I've forgotten. The humbucking coil as well. What more do you want? And that's 1962. I wonder to myself, <laughs> have, have we really, have we really come anywhere in all these decades? Huh. Adios.